Kosovo is a region in the Balkan Peninsula which has suffered from decades of ethnic conflict. From 1996 to 1999, there was an intensive armed conflict uh, between the force of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and Kosovo Liberation Army involving the ethnic conflict between Serbs and Albanians. In order to respond to this crisis, the Security Council has adopted in June 1999 Resolution 1244. In this resolution, Resolution 1244, the Security Council established, um, first of all, a Kosovo force known as KFO and UN Interim Administration Mission in Kosovo known as AMIC. So the question I want to address in this clip is, on what basis can the Security Council establish these two missions? The answer lies in Chapter 7 of the UN Charter. So if you look at the Chapter, uh, the, the Charter of the United Nations, there are 19 chapters, and the Chapter 7 is one of the most well-known chapters among them. And Chapter 7 starts with Article 39. Under Article 39, the Security Council first of all determined the existence of a threat to the peace. And this, that peace is understood to mean international peace as opposed to domestic peace. In the case of Kosovo, the, under Resolution 1244, the Security Council first of all determined the, the existence of the threat by saying that the situation in the region continued to constitute a threat to international peace and security. And this determination of the threat opened the door to a wide range of measures taken by the Security Council under Chapter 7, including, in this case, the establishment of KFO, Kosovo Force, and the creation of AMIC. So let's look at, first of all, the establishment of KFO, Kosovo Force. Well, if you look at Article 42 of the UN Charter, the UN Security Council has the authority to take military enforcement measures. Well, what do you mean by enforcement measures? Well, enforcement measures are measures taken without the consent or against the will of the territorial state. So, for instance, just like sending the troops to the Netherlands without permission from the Dutch government. So, to take military measures against the, the will or against the, without the consent of the territorial state. That's an enforcement measure. And initially, the idea was for the UN to conclude a special agreement which would have allowed the Security Council to use member state military force in order to maintain international peace and security. But in practice, this special agreement has not yet been concluded, and it is quite unlikely that there will be a new agreement in the near future. So a solution that Security Council came up with was the practice of authorization. To authorize member states to use military force as opposed to obliging them or requiring them to use to take military uh, military measures, and this practice of permission, uh, the the practice of authorization, started during the Gulf War, in which the Security Council authorized the member state, cooperating with the government of Kuwait, to use all necessary means in order to restore international peace and security in the area. So this was exactly what happened in the case of Kosovo. Under Resolution 1244, in paragraph 7, the UN Security Council authorized the member states and relevant international organizations, in this case NATO, to establish the international, peace and, uh, international security presence, which was KFO, Kosovo Force. So Kosovo Force was established uh, according to Resolution 1244 and managed by NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And at present, as many as 31 states are contributing their, their troops in order to sustain the operation of KFO in, in Kosovo. 
And one of the first tasks undertaken by CAFO was to delimitalize the Kosovo Liberation Army. And apart from that, CAFO has been preventing hostilities, uh, ensuring public safety, and also helping international uh, humanitarian missions in order so that they can operate safely in, in Kosovo. So now I have talked about the creation of CAFO, Kosovo Force. So let's move on to another mission, the UN Interim Administra Administration Mission, Administration Mission in, in, in Kosovo known as AMIC. So AMIC is one of the UN peacekeeping operations uh, operating uh, in, in various parts of the world. And at present, there are 16 UN peacekeeping missions in, in the world. And perhaps you have heard of Blue Helmet, as you can see from this picture. And just to remind you, not only men, but also women are integral part of the UN peacekeeping operations, as you can see from this picture. And if you look at the UN Charter, Charter of the United Nations, there are no clear-cut legal provisions which could be used as a legal basis for the establishment of UN peacekeeping operations. Well, you could say um, the, the, the UN Security Council has the authority to recommend measures under Article 30, uh, 39 and Article 40, and th these provisions could be used as a legal basis, but it's not entirely clear-cut. But despite the absence of clear-cut clear legal uh, provisions, the practice of UN peacekeeping operations has been clearly accepted by member states as part of the authority exercised by Security Council to maintain international peace and security. So in the case of Kosovo, under Resolution 1244, the Security Council authorized the Secretary General, at the time Kofi Annan, to establish an international civil presence in Kosovo, as opposed to security presence, an international civil presence was AMIC. And what happened in practice is that Kofi Annan appointed the special representative of the Secretary General, called, well, known as uh, in, the, in the United Nations, uh, SOSG, and the first the special, representative, the special representative appointed by Kofi Annan was this man, the Demerio, a respected Brazilian UN diplomat who was unfortunately killed in Iraq in 2003 during his mission there. And AMIC was unprecedented in a sense that the UN itself has undertaken almost comprehensive governmental authority in order to, to administer um, Kosovo. So AMIC was responsible not only drafting a basic, basic pieces of legislation, but also, for instance, determine tax rates or resolve property claims among private parties, and administer social welfare. So all kinds of activities which had direct impact on local populations. So now I have talked about the establishment of K4 and AMIC. And K4 and AMIC were part of the measures taken by the Security Council within the regime of collective security. So the idea of collective security is to limit or even prohibit the unilateral solutions and trying to maintain international peace and security together as a sort of the, through the collective effort. And the, the idea of collective security is very different from the, uh, collective defense. In the case of collective defense, you assume a potential enemy outside its own security regime. But in the case of collective security, you would presume or you would accommodate even a potential enemy within its own security regime. So that's a basic difference, a difference between the collective defense and collective security. So now you have watched three video clips. In the first place, I talked about the principle of the non-use of force under Article 2, Paragraph 4 of the UN Charter. 
And I explained two exceptions, exceptions to the principle of the non use of force, which are self defense under Article 51 and uh, military enforcement measures or the, or the practice of authorization under Chapter 7. So the remaining question is whether or not um, there are any other exceptions to the principle of the non use of force. And one of the strongest candidates in this regard is the doctrine of humanitarian intervention. So in my next clip, I'm going to talk about the doctrine of humanitarian intervention and whether or not there is a legal place in contemporary international law.